Good morning. Our current topic is serving other people and focusing on other people. This is not easy and before it naturally comes to you, it might take years and months and it can never happen. But at least you tried. If you're a fast learner, it might take seconds before it clicks, something clicks with you. Wow, this really resonates with me. This really feels right and makes sense. Let's try it. I want to give it a go. Letting go of the ego, letting go of myself and loving others as much as I love myself. Why? Because I have this desire inside of me to be of use, to be of service. I see how much pleasure it brings to make other people happy. Be it women, be it your kids, your wife, or just general people around you. Okay, and to make this easier, we are going to do some case studies of you. Now, there's an interesting line message I got this morning. My Highness Goddess Lena. My Highness. Uh, the last two days my mind has been blank. I've not thought about myself. At all. Only of others. People less fortunate than me. I've given money to a homeless person in the street. I am thinking of the poor Nigerian kids who have been taken hostage. It's came, it's come, it's, it came to me two days ago after seeing your video how selfish I've been thinking of myself before others. I've always helped people in the streets. That's me all over giving away. It's in my nature. And so on. And thank you for sending this message. Of course, I'm not going to mention your name. You know who you are. Now, what about other people? What do you feel when you read a message like this? First of all, let's count the number of my's and I's and the number of other people. There is a, an obvious overweight uh, on one side with my's and I's, starting from my highness, goddess Lena, not your highness. Which is okay, which is okay, doesn't matter how you address me, I really don't care. Now, if you truly think about other people, you talk about other people too. You talk about ideas, you talk about events or other people. There's four things you can talk about. The first, the lowest level of spiritual development is you. Second level is other people. Third level is events. Nigerian kids. I haven't heard about that, but anyway, okay, events that have happened. And the top level is ideas. Something abstract, something that you can't touch with your hands and is not really on the news, or it can be on the news, but not really appeals to the, to the general audience because it requires thinking and it requires understanding of this and this principles of life and whatever else. Anyway, it requires some activity. It's not chewed food for you. What's on the news, the events, it is chewed food. You just absorb the information and you discuss it with your friends. You've all heard the same news. Of course, you might have your idea of where the uh, Malaysian airplane is and your friend might have a different idea and you can talk about that. Does that really give you anything except entertainment value? Yeah, you're shaking the air, you're making a conversation, you're spending time with your friends, okay? And, and that can be very satisfying. I'm not saying that it's wrong, it's, um, it's just a way to spend time. So is playing computer games or watching porn on the internet. I mean, it's all, it's all spending time and it's up to you how you are going to spend your time. I strongly encourage that you spend your time in a useful way that will contribute to your growth and growth of other people. How do you grow? By nourishing yourself. No, by serving others because it lifts you above others immediately. When you're in a room of um, 10 people and, um, and the floor is dirty, nobody will get up and sweep the floor. Because they think, well, others should. I don't want to be doing this. This is work. This is hard. And if you are the one to get up and do it, you are ahead in a physical, mental, and spiritual ways. One, in a physical way, because you're exercising and everybody's sitting down. Two, in a mental way, because you have overcome that pride that, why should it be me? Why not you or not her? 
and the spiritual way because you are willing to sacrifice a certain area of your comfort, certain bit, certain time of spending in comfort, sitting there in the chair with the magazine yawning, waiting for something, and serving others. And people will envy you, people will admire you, people will feel that you are ahead of them. Unless they're way below at the eye level and cannot see it and they're, what a fool, why did he get up? I would never do that. Now, back to our case study. Except for the obvious I and mine, when you find yourself focusing on, the, on other people, you notice that you don't really think that much about yourself and it's not important if it's you focusing on other people, if it's somebody else focusing on other people as long as the job is done. You don't need to um, boast to anybody what you have done. Many people do. Some people even put it on their name cards that they are donating to a certain charity. Okay. Um, now, the less fortunate part, less fortunate, people who are less fortunate than us, we are not to decide who is less fortunate or more fortunate. If you feel that you are more fortunate than anybody else, then only points to you being less fortunate than any, everybody else because you create the gap. You put yourself in the position of deciding who is less fortunate than you and what, what fortune is. Would you say that these Thai people living here who only have one car and a house of two stories and not three stories are less fortunate than the people who have two cars and a house of three stories? No, you wouldn't say this because they have not reached that level of greed and materialism yet where they are satisfied with three family members and just one car. Okay. It's sort of still not up to the European standards but um, definitely not less fortunate or a person without a car at all. Maybe that is their choice. Maybe that's how they were born. And people, if they were born into some sort of society or community or say in a poor country, they don't realize that they're the less fortunate ones because, okay, they might not have the, the Lego, but they have sticks to play with, they have stones. Now, how is that worse than Lego? They play with nature, they play with their friends, they don't have iPads. Is that less fortunate than the kids? Looking at my friend's kid, he's stuck to the phone. He's begging daddy most of the day, daddy, can I, can I please take your phone? Why? Because there's Angry Birds on the phone. And he can play Angry Birds and he's so absorbed in the Angry Birds that all the other kids walking around do not matter to him. So, is this being less fortunate or more fortunate? The daddy, yes, he has a Samsung Galaxy Note 3. And um, it's great. You can play games. The sound quality is good. The kid is fortunate. They also have a tablet and another phone and lots of games and lots of toys. But what does that do in the long run that removes the person from interaction, personal interaction with other kids? when you see in Thailand, although many people do have iPads and, and so on, people still play together. They run around jumping on sticks and whatever else. They play with each other. They learn how to build relationships. They learn how to not shoot angry birds, but how to, how to make friends with each other and how to resolve conflicts, interpersonal conflicts. I think that that is more more valuable. Okay, you can say there are educational games. Yellow, you click on yellow. Blue, you click on blue. But um, observing the kids, they're not really interested in the educational games. They're more interested in the time-wasting games. Okay, yes, there is some value in it. Your thumbs and your index fingers get really fast with clicking here and there. There is something that it does, but I think that the real world does a lot more. Getting back to less fortunate than us, 
we are not to decide who is less fortunate and who is more fortunate. So assume, accept the truth that we are all leveled, that we are all on the same level. The only way to raise yourself above, above others, is by hard work. Hard work, not for your own benefit, not to make more money and buy a bigger house, but by serving others, by being below them. You can only be above by being below. And this is not a game of words. The person will submit to you only realizing that you are humble and that really it's by their own will that they want to submit to you, that they want to be beneath you because they know that you can lower yourself down in front of others, that you can be modest, that you can be humble, that you can be serving others and sacrifice certain things that you value for others. This is what brings out love in people, this is what makes others care for you, you being below them. And once they see that you are willing to go all the way down, you are raised by others. They look up to you because this is natural, it is in us. When they see that somebody is following the rules of nature, the purpose, serving its purpose of life, of being there for other people, people admire you, people admire people who sacrifice themselves, people admire good leaders, people admire people who do not serve themselves and are not full of themselves, who do not get all the wealth in the world just to be rich, just to have everything I want to have and maybe throw this and that to the charity now and then. But not because I care about what the kids want. People who donate to the charity very rarely would actually want to go to the charity and physically help. Say, wash the floor in the orphanage. What? Yeah, I can some, send them a hundred bucks, but go there and actually wash the floor with my hands? No, thank you. And this is real charity. Money is appreciated, surely, but it's easy. It is an easy way out, and it's an easy gratification of, oh, I've done something good. I've helped the charity. What charity? Don't really remember. Where is it? Don't really know. What sort of people are in the, in their charity? Who Who's helping who? Uh, not really sure, but I'm sure they're doing good work. I've read their brochure. Okay. Helping the animal shelter. Have you ever been to the animal shelter? It stinks. And there's dog shit everywhere. Yeah. Would you want to go? Surely not. Would you send money? I do. Maybe you would too. But what would be really hard to do, what would be the real sacrifice? The real sacrifice would be put on your old clothes, go there and say, what can I help you with today? Surely they would not refuse. They would say, well, you can clean the dog shit from the floor. There's a bucket, there's some gloves, there's whatever. And you would do that for two hours, three hours of your weekend. All the hair in the air, all those sick dogs hit by cars, moaning. You know, there's blood on the floor. Who knows, you can catch some sort of disease, the virus. Disgusting, right? Now, that is real charity, that is the sacrifice. What about, what about helping the beggar on the street, the homeless person? Talk to him. Talk to the homeless person. Why are they homeless? What drove them out to the street? Do you want to know? No, we don't really have time for it. Does anybody want to know? Yeah, I kind of wonder, but if I sit next to him, who knows what sort of disease he has? Okay, that you might catch, sure. Helping the homeless find the cause why they're homeless. If you're listening now, you know who you are. M. Mm. Don't know if you have a number. Oh yes, you have a number. Three, six, three, eight. Next time you see that homeless person, 
talk to them and find out what drove them out to the street. Try to solve the cause. Because by giving money, you're probably contributing to their alcohol addiction. Probably. This is just one of the versions. Drugs. Gambling. Irresponsibility. Whatever else. Giving money sometimes is not the right help. The right sort of help. Unless you really know that it's one-off. And that by accumulating a certain amount, that person will go and do something with it. Something that would actually solve their problem. If a homeless person has been homeless for the last 10 years, you realize that there is something wrong at the core. We can all be homeless at some stage, but some of us will think, okay, I might go and get a job sweeping the streets and get an income and rent a little room. Okay, and not be homeless in a year because I can pay my own rent. Why are homeless homeless? I'm not asking you why are orphans orphans. It's, it, it's not up to us to solve, but say with the homeless person, the less fortunate than you. Maybe he's more fortunate, he doesn't have to work. Well, it is his work, sitting there begging for money. Is he disabled? Take him to the organization that helps disabled people, that gives them something that they can do. And there's many things that can be done. Some, some manual labor, some... Well, it really depends. There's many options, but when you want to help somebody, you have to know what you're helping with. You have to know the reason, you have to provide solutions. And help doesn't have to be necessarily to the people who obviously need it. They don't obviously need it. We're used to think. We used to think that people obviously need it. Certain charities and so on. But there is a lot more to it. There is a lot more to it. People who are equal to us, i.e. everybody, people need help every now and then and they might they might be more rich than you or more poor it doesn't matter they still need help they still feel emotional downs and ups and your job is to let go of the i i i what do i want today oh does this itch does that does that feel right? Oh, is this beautiful enough? Oh, am I looking fine? Oh, me, me, me. What am I going to do today? What am I going to eat? Who is going to come up to me and talk to me about me so I can talk, tell them all what I think about me? Once you're away from that, you notice, oh, wow, this is actually an interesting world to exist in because there are so many different people. Wow, and all have something to talk about, and all are so different. How exciting. Let's, let's listen to that person, let's talk about that person. Tell me more, asking the right questions. Identifying what the people need, how you might help. It's not giving $10. It might be giving a smile. It might be asking the right question that will lead the person to the right answer that will change their life. A student who just graduated from high school thinking, well, should I go, go work or go study more? And there is nobody to talk to them. Parents, sure, they give them pocket money. Oh, you must go to college. I don't care what you think, you must go to college because that's, you know, you're going to get a good job and just like everybody else, this is what we hope for. But do you actually talk to people like that? Do you find out what is in their soul? What is stopping, stopping them? Are there any self-esteem issues? any confidence issues that you can solve by a 10 minute or a 20 minute conversation that will help that person in choosing the right direction in their life. Examples are endless. Case studies are endless too. You can take any message that I have received today and study it. Um, now this this is from a good student. Now maybe one is enough. 
Oh, we're almost 20 minutes. Okay, let's end it here. Have a good day.